All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beginning of our Unit 7. You'll notice it's not very long. Um, these are the three lessons that are in this unit. The first one that we're going to deal with today is what's called slope fields, looking at some antiderivative sort of things. Uh, we're going to look at a new way to do antidifferentiation. And in lesson two, a little bit in lesson one today, and in lesson three, we're dealing with integrating and antiderivatives using a real world sort of idea of exponential growth and decay. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to do today. We're going to look at differential equations and mostly in the field of slope or mostly in the area of slope fields. So first, let's define a differential equation. It's it kind of think about it. It's an equation involving a derivative. The order, it's just a label of like first order, second order, third order, is of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative involved. So if it's a first derivative, it's a first order differential equation. If it's a second derivative, it's a second order differential equation. We're not going to do a whole lot of that sort of idea, but we just want to get the idea down there of what a differential equation is. So this right here would be a differential equation. When we look at dy dx is equal to secant squared plus 2x plus 5. There are many different ways that this question can be asked. This is one way where we say, okay, find all functions or find all y value, y equals, that dy dx is this statement, which basically means we want to find the antiderivative. Now, we have dealt with this quite a few times. Basically, what we want to do is the integral of secant squared x plus 2x plus 5 dx. Sorry, I missed my x there. Okay. Um, and what we want to do is we want to find all functions that represent this statement. So when we find the antiderivative of each piece, this antiderivative of secant squared is tangent x. The antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of 5 is 5x. But we have to add this constant at the end. This is called, usually called the constant, can't remember if I wrote this down later, of integration. Oh, look, c is a constant. And you remember if we take the derivative of this statement, the derivative of a constant is 0, so this goes away here. There's no constant at the end, or there's that derivative of c becomes 0. We, always, we can verify that this is a true statement, saying that this is my answer, because if I take the derivative of y, or find dy dx, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 5x is 5, and the derivative of the constant is 0. So you need to know that when you're trying to satisfy this or find all functions, you're actually taking the antiderivative. Notice what we're doing is we're taking the antiderivative without putting numbers on our integral. This is called a definite integral, or sorry, indefinite integral. Okay, the we talked about this before. If I go from a to b, this is a definite integral. It has an area below the curve between these two points. However, with nothing there, this is called the indefinite. The indefinite integral, which means we're not going to get a number value, a numerical value. We're going to get a function. And what this plus c represents is it's the family of all functions whose derivative is dy dx. This plus c is super, super important. So if I ask a question, finding the antiderivative of dy dx, or finding all functions right here, if you don't write plus c, you get minus points. It's the same thing that goes on the AP test. If you don't write plus c, they will not give you the points for this particular problem. But what if they wanted a very specific function? 
So if you want something specific or exact is the way I worded it here, they have to give you more information. If you want to find a particular solution, say we have one here for the function dy dx is e to the x minus 6x squared, I also have to give you an initial value. This is called an initial value problem. And what we can do here is we can integrate e to the x minus 6x squared dx. And we know the integral is e to the x minus 2x cubed plus c, and this is equal to y. So what we can do is we can plug in x equals 1, and we can plug in x or y equals 0. Now we can solve for the fact that c would equal, let's if, see if x is 1, that's a 2, so we would add 2, and subtract e to the first power. So it's 2 minus e. So our exact solution, our particular solution is y equals e to the x minus 2x cubed plus 2 minus e. And yes, technically that's a decimal, but I don't really want to deal with the decimal right now. All right, we have done this before in the past, just kind of briefly looking at it to see where, uh, where we were headed. Um, so we need to find the antiderivative, plug in the point to solve for c. That way we can solve the initial value problem. Now, this is all well and good. This is kind of stuff we've covered already. Let's take a look at, um, not sure what's going on here. Um, sorry, I forgot one little thing here, using fundamental theorem. I'm going to kind of put everything out here and we'll talk about it right this way. So remember one of the things that we dealt with in the last unit where we had a big f of x is equal to the integral from a to the x, a to x of f of t dt. One of the areas in this unit that we can use this idea, if you recall, we had things, by the way, we had things in our lesson where we were trying to do this, a to the x, f of t, dt, and we tried to find dy dx by derivative, uh, finding the derivative of both sides. So we're going to be using that in this case. If you're given a differential equation, just like f prime of x, so that's dy dx, and it's giving you e to the negative x squared, well, we don't really know how to take the antiderivative of this yet, and maybe you'll never know. I don't know. But this is an initial value problem. If I want to find the solution to the differential equation given in this statement for something I can't really find the antiderivative for and for which the initial value is when x is 7, y is 3, we can use this idea. So the answer is going to have a definite integral and it's going to look like this. We've dealt with this before, going from 7 to x of e to the negative t squared. So we're using the t instead of the x. And then if t x is 7, this thing becomes 0, so we have to add 3 to make f of 7 equal to 3. And if I wanted to know what was f of 2, I could say 3 plus 7 to 2. Obviously, this piece is going to be negative here or switched around. And if I want to know x is 2, we can actually plug this into our calculator. We go math 9. And we just type in 3 plus integral 7 to 2 e to the negative. We have to use x. Actually, we can use t if you really want to. You just make sure it says dt at the end. And we'll get some approximation. Let's see what that's going to look like here. Math 9. I go from 7 to 2 of e to the negative x or t squared dt plus 3 and I get 2.995 or 2.996 actually. All 
All right. Now let's look at something called a slope field. Uh, we'll get to the dots there in just a minute. A slope field is actually a way to visualize a solution graph for a differential equation. So if you're given a differential equation, you can actually determine what it would look like graphically. What it does is it shows slopes at different points on a differential equation. So if we were to think about dy dx is equal to cosine. What I have here in this graph is at every single point, we could calculate the slope at every single point. Let's actually go ahead and look at something we'd more often look at. You're not ever going to actually need to do this many dots. Okay, more often, oops, where's my dots here? Oh, man. Okay, let's look at this here. Uh, I'm not sure why it came out weird like this on two different pages. Um, but this is the same thing here, except for with less dots. Usually, you're going to only need to do six, maybe eight dots on a AP test. You're not going to need to do a hundred different dots. Okay. So what these points represent, let's say in this particular case, this is pi halves, pi, negative pi halves, and negative pi, so for our x values. Notice in this case, the dy dx actually has no y value. So if I plug in a y, there's nothing to actually plug in. So what we need to do is we need to plug in values. So at x equals 0, we know cosine of 0 is 1. So at x equals 0, we're going to have a little dashed line with a slope of 1 or an approximate slope of 1. And at every x equals 0, we're going to have that same slope. All right, then at x equals pi halves, the cosine of pi halves is 0. So we're going to have a slope of 0. And the same thing goes for negative pi halves. Then at cosine of pi, cosine of pi is negative 1. So the slope at all of my pi's is going to be negative 1. And same thing with um, negative pi. And what you'll notice, oh, let's see, pen color. Let's go to blue. What you'll notice is if you tried to draw some line in here, the line would have to be a slope of negative 1 down to a slope of 0, back up to a positive 1, eventually back to a slope of 0, and a slope of negative 1. Well, we know that the antiderivative of cosine is sine. And notice that this kind of looks like a sine curve. If we were to start down here, Look at that. That gets us a sine curve. The blue line has nothing is not actually part of the slope field. All of those red dashes that we just created is what the slope field is. It shows the slopes at every single point on the differential equation, showing a family of functions. Notice this, like this is another possible answer and this is another possible answer for this differential equation. Now, these are not complex things. Like if you had something like this, the, the process of a slope field is really not complex. We need to think about plugging in numbers 
into this statement. So at the point 0, 0, I need to plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0, get a slope of 0. At x equals 1, y equals 0, I need to plug in 1 plus 0, I get a slope of 1. At x equals 2 and y equals 0, we get a slope of 2. Now, as long as you kind of make it steeper than the 1, you're good. All right, so if we follow this trend, just plugging in points, the point 0, 1 has a slope of 1. The point 0, 2 has a slope of 2. And the point 0, 3 has a slope of 3. We continuous, continue this. Uh, the point 1, 1 has a slope of 2. This has a slope of 3. And this has a slope of 4. Now, by hand, these are a little bit challenging to draw. That's obvious. So when it comes to an AP, te AP test, what they do is they make sure that your slope of 3 is steeper than your slope of 1, as it should be. You can't just keep drawing the same slope on every single piece. You should be very happy if you see a slope field question on your AP exam because that particular piece is going to be very, very simple. So what you would do is just continue this pattern at x is negative 1, y is 0, the slope is negative 1. Here the slope is negative 2. At negative 1, 1, the slope is 0. At negative 2, 2, the slope is 0. Negative 2, 1, the slope is negative 1. Right here is the slope is negative 1 and 2 makes a slope of positive 1. And negative 2, positive 3 has a slope of 1. And negative 1, 3 has a slope of 2. What you should do is look in your textbook under section 6.1. And you'll see much better graphs than what we make. So you can kind of see the way the slope field goes even a little bit better. OK, oops. If we wanted to do one more here, it's the same process. Usually, these numbers are very simple, negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2, or even just negative 1 to 1 and up to 2. I've seen slope field questions that just have 9 points on them. Okay. This is kind of an over-exaggeration of what you're going to need to do. Notice when the y value is 0, each of those have undefined values. All right, so we're not going to put anything there. At the point when x is 0, the slope is 0. When the y value is 1, it's whatever x is. So here my slope is negative 1. Here it's negative 2. Here it's positive 1. Here it's positive 2. When y is 2, it's half of whatever x is. Or sorry, the slope is half of whatever x is. So here's a slope of half. Here's a slope of negative 1. Here is positive 1, and here is positive half. All right, we kind of get the idea, I believe, you're plugging in x and y values to determine a slope um, for your differential equation. I am going to leave us with these two statements, and as I mentioned in class, I will share with you your assignment sheet here in the next couple of minutes. And I will see you guys tomorrow.